everybody, Matt from Eastwood. Happy Monday. We are in the Eastwood garage doing another live tech session. I have with me Andy, one of our product uh, developers and product manager. Um, he's here with us to talk about the Contour SCT, an ever popular product um, that has been blowing up on the internet since we've come, up, come out with it. So for any of you guys that are familiar with this today, I'm going to give you a rundown of the tool itself before we kind of get into the, uh, in the new products that we're covering. So Contour SCT, uh, for any of you guys that haven't seen one of this before, uh, it's a, a really handy stripping uh, and now polishing tool as well um, that has an inline sander, sanding drum or surface conditioning drum on it. Uh, the great thing about this tool is that it puts the uh, drum right there in line with what you're using. It doesn't have it out to the side like some tools may have. It causes some torque and you can really uh, bear down on this tool because it is an industrial design. It's made for using in automotive use especially. Um, as far as the abrasives go, we have our original designs over here and I think we have a couple shots we can show you uh, of these in action that we've had out since the beginning. So we have our surface conditioning drum here that works really well for putting a profile in metal and doing light uh, stripping of paint. And then we have our uh, stripping drum, which as you can see takes off paint very, very well, also Bondo filler. Um, and then if, and that's also another shot there of it. Uh, now this is our expander wheel where you can put different grit sandpaper on it. You can even use it for non-automotive use uh, like that. And also if you're trying to rip a, a Bondo out or many layers of paint, like you can see here, it works really awesome. So those are the ones that have been out for quite some time. They work well, but you guys are asking for more. Uh, you want more drums, different uh, types of finishes, depending on the work that you're doing. So this is our layout here, and Andy's going to show us some of these new drums that have just come out. They are on our website. You can purchase them today. Um, but he's going to give you a rundown. So what's the, the first one you got, Andy, for us to check out? So the first one we're going to show you is a, another surface conditioning drum. Just like you see with the red one that we come yep. that comes with the actual unit itself, um, this is 200 or 320 grit. Yep. So when it comes down to using it on aluminum, you don't want to take away too much material, yeah, yeah. and you just want to get those nice lines to get that you know not necessarily a polished look, but you know almost like a machined look. Yeah, so we're going to start finished. with this one. Um, it's not going to take away too much material on the actual. Uh, and this is this is just unfinished aluminum right out of correct. There. Yep. So we'll okay. show you this real quick just to. This is what the 320 did right here with a couple swipes. We're going to go over to uh, the buffing in a minute here, but we're going to quick just go ahead, do a full sweep across this bottom piece. Then we're going to swap over to the, uh, the buffing drum, which we'll get into in a minute. We'll uh, anchor this down real fast and take a couple swipes, show you how fast you can condition aluminum, steel, stainless steel. When you use the, uh, the buffing drum on stainless, you can get a mirror finish. Yeah. Um, it does take some time. Most people know that you know, with buffing in general, um, you it just... It does take some time, yeah. yeah. So we're just going to do a couple quick swipes on this. It has that almost... Um, as it comes from the, the factory with aluminum, it has that kind of... I don't know what do you even call it. Um, so it's a yeah. protective film on it. Yes. So especially yeah. when you're going to go TIG welding it, you want to get, up, get that off. The TIG welder will clean that with an, a, an AC. But honestly, if you want a really good weld, you want to get them as clean as yeah, humanly possible. Yeah. So we'll just do a couple quick swipes and uh, show you the kind of finish you're going to get with a conditioning drum. Wow, that's pretty good. That's all you needed. So if you're going to make a dash and you don't want just that unfinished look, you want those nice, you know, light streaks across looking like something that came out of a production facility. That was, you know, all of five or six seconds. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to take some pre and low VOC pre. We're going to spray this down, getting the contaminants out of the actual aluminum itself. Because when you are using that drum, it is pulling some of that and you're kind of grinding a little bit in. So you want to just spray it down real quick, wipe this, it off. And this will work, you know, we're doing aluminum here, but you can see some of the dirt. Somebody's doing steel, this works equally as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take, you know, a liquid metal polish and we're just going to put a little bit on the actual piece itself. What we're going to do. Just kind of 
you know, work it around. And we're just going to give this 30 seconds or so just to give you guys an idea. We don't want to take up, you know, all your time, but we're going to quick throw down and get this uh, nice and cleaned up. Same thing we did before. Swipe down, get some that off. You can see we didn't really touch the outsides here. You can see just those little scratch marks still. But then it cleaned up, and if you actually touch this, you can feel that you know a drop of water would just bead right off. That was all of 20 seconds. If we sat here and spent maybe five or 10 minutes, yeah. you could get that up to a mirror finish. So that, that buffing pad, that would be great instantly, I think of, you know, with the, uh, the retro trailers and things like that, yep. got, you know, the automotive community is getting into now. You can but, cover a lot of ground with it. Yeah, so why? It's One like, of the ones that we want to try it out on is the chrome tanks inside of like a triaxle or oh, an 18 wheeler. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, with a normal buffer, you're sitting there trying to kind of get around all the edges. This, you can go on that flat curved surface and just work up and down and get a really nice mirrored finish yeah. with it. Really takes next to no time at all in relation to what buffing normally takes. Yeah. So that's you know, a nice one that, I think the first video we ever put out doesn't come with a buffing drum. Yeah. So we came out as soon as we heard the guy say it, we bring it out. Yeah, and you can use different compounds with that. You know, if somebody wanted to go beyond this. Yeah, you can get a lot more aggressive. You can get less aggressive yeah. depending on the hardness of the material. If you're using stainless steel, you get a little bit more aggressive and work your way down. Yep. Same thing with steel. And with aluminum, since it is a softer material, you're obviously going to have to you know, act accordingly. Yeah, yeah. So what we'll do is um, we're going to quick switch over, show you guys how fast you can change out the, uh, the drum on this. Just take the provided uh, Allen key and just, it is a reverse thread, so just be sure when you do purchase it, which we actually just dropped. Oh boy. <laughs> so this right. is double keyed, and we will put in, you can see they are directional, so you want to make sure that you have it going on the correct way, and it literally just slides right on. So this one here, this is a, this is kind of hybrid. Yeah, this is a hybrid. This is going to last a good amount longer than a normal conditioning wheel. So if you were going to use a conditioning wheel to strip paint, it will work. Right. It's just going to take more time to actually take down some of that paint. This will strip and condition. So if you look really closely, there's actually a basically a sanding a piece of sandpaper inside, and then it has that kind of scotch bright uh, material in between. So this is going to last a good amount of time, and you can actually get into really nice edges where you'll actually start rounding off some of that scotch bright, and then the flaps will still stay there, and you can get into like right. feathered edges. And I think that, uh, at least for me using the tool with the conditioning one, I oftentimes get, well, I think even this one here has, you know, you get a center where Correct. it's bowed out in here. So with having that sandpaper, I think it's going to be a little stronger, not going to bow out quite as quickly. Correct. You know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the, uh, the, this 50 fender. You've seen Matt do a lot of work on it in the past. I am going to grab um, a little bit of a breathing respirator because the paint that's on these vehicles has been there for an extended period of time, obviously. And uh, there's also dirt and grime. You know, we don't want to be breathing those things in. So going to quick. If you guys have any questions, we got Scotty over there as always. Scotty's answering questions. So if you have any questions about the product, uh, for Andy or myself, uh, drop them to Scott and we'll answer them and he'll also be answering them on the fly for you. We're going to spend just another couple seconds on this just to show you how quickly this thing can take down some paint. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do another you know, small section line down here and show you what it can do on uh, curved surfaces you know, without you know, like, you know, burning up the, yeah. the drum itself.
So I noticed a little bit of difference here. I'd say it's kind of intermediate. It's probably just a little more aggressive than Correct. The, the, the straight red one. So that's a nice, like you said, that's a nice intermediate. You know, again, for you guys that aren't familiar with this, you know, we always say, how hot is it? You know, it's warm, but it, you know, I can stick my hand on there. It's not, not going to It's going to be no different metal. than, um, you know, honestly, the, your car being out in the sun you know, in, the, in the summer. I think we did some testing of this in the past. Um, with a conditioning drum, it was actually what got it the hottest, and right. it got maybe 110 degrees. The actual abrasive drum, since it has more voids in it, it only got to about 94, 95 okay. degrees. Yeah, so. Um, and buffing does create a little bit of heat, we all know that, but it's nothing to the point where you're going to warp any of the metal itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I know that's a question over and over yeah, again. Yeah, always so. we see that. And, and as always, with any tool, you've know, you got to use caution. If you sit in one spot for five minutes on yeah, that, yeah, you can, but yep. you know, if you're moving like you are, I don't think we've ever heard of anybody having an issue. I know we haven't, yeah. you know. We've yeah. stripped a couple entire vehicles, top to bottom, yep. and um, haven't had any issue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this quick area right here while Matt actually throws on the, um, the scaling drum on the other SCT we have sitting here. Um, as I'm doing that, you know, he'll quick swap that over, and we're going to move over to uh, a 67 Camaro frames to show you what the scaling drum can do. Uh, make quick work of uh, frames. I would say probably top to bottom to do this entire one with maybe even the 80 or one of the um, our bigger abrasives, probably five or ten minutes, honestly. Yeah, that's not bad so at all. So try to sit there with an angle grinder, do that. You're actually going to be creating a lot of heat because you're only actually stripping this side, yeah. the size of an area. So one of these, obviously when we'd go and use it on the side, we'd bring it up on top, use the weight of the tool and just work back and forth. And we'd have this thing stripped in a couple minutes. Yeah, and and then of course the you know the the uh, the normal stripping drum drum we have, you know the, the traditional one. It's they the got Bondo and yep. filler. It's the most aggressive. But you know you guys, if you haven't stripped the you know old paint like this, this is a lot different than like modern day paint. You know when you're getting these lacquers. Substantially these harder. Yeah. So the fact that this red drum with the sandpaper. I, you know, just watching you do it, I know it's already less effort than the normal one. So Correct. nice intermediate. So what do you got for the, this is, this is the answer. Everybody has been saying that the drums are blowing apart and they catch edges, right? Yeah. So basically what we did here is we're using, it's a hard nylon. Okay. And um, you can see it's got a lot of voids in it. So it, it lets large scale of rust, you know, get thrown nice. out of it. Um, you can see I can move this. Flexible. Yeah, yeah, it's flexible with my fingers. Um, it's not going to catch and rip it out of your hand like yeah. some of the stainless steel ones will. Um, so what, what it does is it, it moves just enough, but it's strong enough, to then take off rust and get around bolts. Yeah. So we're just going to take another couple seconds or so, and we're going to come over here and uh, you know, just clean up this rusty area on 67 Camaro frame. Uh, if you want to see what it actually does after two or three minutes, you can see on the opposite side, the pasture side, that's the point where the rust is removed, like a large scale is gone, and then you can use an encapsulator mm -hmm. and eventually a chassis black or extreme chassis black to finish your job. We all can't sit here and spend time to the point where we have every little speck removed yeah, off yeah. of our frames. It's not, you know, it's so time intensive and it's honestly sometimes not possible without mm -hmm. stripping down fully abrasive right. blasting or chemicals. So for a guy that wants to keep driving his vehicle, strip it down, encapsulate it and get it back on the road. This, this is the perfect. answer. And I can see this is, this is death to one of the, the normal stripping drums. Yep. This seam in the center there, you catch that on one of those drums. I mean, it's, it's any, any tool, you know, that's reciprocating. That's, so yep. I, I'm interested to see how that does on that. And what sure. I'll do is I'll run over these bolts here real quick, just for a couple seconds. Yeah. And just to show you that the thing's you know, still alive. We obviously, apart. we use the same exact drum on the other side. So we'll just get started here and, and show you what it can do. Cool.
Wow, that's, what, uh, that's and good. I mean, just want to quick show you just the way we started using it. Hasn't changed at all. After you use this for a little while, your actual bristles are going to set back slightly. You just swap it around the other way, and it's just as aggressive yeah. as it was the first time you used it. To get you a better idea of how clean this is, we'll grab the pre again. Honestly, it's throwing dust everywhere. Yeah, it's a little deceiving for sure. And we'll just wipe that down. Yeah, that was all 20 seconds or so, 30 yeah. seconds. So when you do spend two to three minutes on the other side, it's basically ready to be painted up. So that's a that's a whole other use for this tool. I mean, yep. normally we're showing it for cleaning at the bare metal, perfect when you're doing body work, but. Yep. I mean, frame stripping now is much quicker. You're not using yeah. wire wheels that are throwing pieces. Absolutely. You know. This thing can be used for a lot of different things. Um, we've already heard of customers that have picked them up and used them for wood conditioning, oh, actually yeah. giving it kind of an old look to it. One guy even said that it was perfect for using for grout. Which, oh, that's a good idea. I mean, it's a multi-purpose tool. It's used for just about everything. So the more, uh, the more things you guys can use it for, the better. Yeah. You know, we're, we're definitely on board, and we want to learn from you guys, and what works best for, uh, for our customers. So what uh, we'll do is we're going to come over here real quick and just go over the rest of, uh, of what's available and quick ask Scott if there's any other questions that have, uh, that have shown up. Sure, I got a couple that popped up. One of them that just popped up was, uh, is this unit variable speed? Yes. Um, it is all the way up to 3,200 RPMs. You can see on the back of the unit here that you go all the way down you know, to a speed of one. And then you, as you're using it, you can keep on moving it up to speed six, which is that 3,200 RPMs. You also can you know, lock it as you're using it um, and just you know, let it rip, kind of reposition your hands yeah, yeah. Um, or change speed on the fly. So if you're working on something, it's not quite enough, just use your thumb, spin it up and uh, start digging deeper into your project. And it's got a, you know, the good thing too I like about it is it has a soft start. You know, it ramps Correct. up, it's not like a cutoff grinder. Yeah, if you guys want to listen to it, I'll put it on the highest setting, but it's a setup just to the max. Oh, we're actually not plugged in. We'll grab the other one real quick. All right. So it took that couple seconds, and it's not gonna rip something out of your hands. Yeah. Um, with the other units that are similar on the market, right. they're out here. Um, it's going to actually torque when you start. With slow start and being in a line, it's you know, perfect for the user. It's not yeah. going to fatigue their arms. Can you hear that again? Yeah, sure. Those are, all the, those are all the little things that, you know, designing the product. Correct. We're, we're using this on cars as we were testing it, yep. you know, and you find those little things that make it Absolutely. You know, work a little better. And then another question we had was, uh, you know, what, what power source does this plug into? It plugs into your normal 110, 120 uh, volt household outlet. It is a nine amp motor, so it does you know, use up a little bit of power, but it needs to be because it is that industrial yeah. strength um, and will last you know, years to come. Sounds good. The only other one is, is uh, Kimberly has said that, you know, looking forward to, you know, maybe seeing some more videos of getting aluminum to a mirror finish because they've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. That they want to. Yeah, we'll do some. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll put something together, a part yeah, that we can uh, we can see do that, to, that to, to show man. how good it, uh, yep. how well it works. Um, also, the other thing that uh, to mention, we have a cool little clip. You know, going back to the industrial kind of aspect of it, this machine has gears inside. So this isn't belt driven. You know, it's a mechanical gear driven uh, internal. So this does not slip. You, you could kind of see when Andy was, you know, you working on the frame. He was, he was hammering down on it pretty hard and the tool wasn't bogging down. You know, it doesn't have a clutch or anything in it. Mm -hmm. So this thing, especially what this means is when you're doing Bondo or heavy stripping or something like that, I mean, you can lean into this thing real hard and, and it'll just, you know, it'll just eat out and, and kill any of that stuff that's, you know, that you're trying to work out in it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those features together, I mean, makes it, you know, the tool's gonna last. So, yep. um, again, for the, uh, for the drums that we have here, uh, some of the new ones we didn't cover every single one they are kind of similar so um, Andy went over already the 80 uh, that's interlaced with the sandpaper here uh, we also have correct me if I'm wrong here we have a what a 240 320 and um, it is I think it's I'm sorry 80 120, 120 240, 240 340. and what we did was we went up to 
the 320 for the actual conditioning right. one because you don't want to be removing a ton at that high of a, of a grit. You're just not going to be removing a ton of material. That's so more of a, meant for being a light. Getting almost into buffing at that point. Correct. Yeah. And then, of course, the buffing, like uh, Andy uh, showed a little earlier, if you guys have missed it, he did a little bit of a, a aluminum panel over there to get a, start getting a mirror finished. And this one, which is probably my favorite of the new one, um, use this guy first if you're, if you're scared of sharp edges that you're going to, uh, you know, tear apart some of these other drum, drums. Use this one first and then you can come back with these and, and work the rest of the area. So uh, the little nylon wire, uh, wire drum is really, really handy. So those are kind of our, our, our drums that we're offering now. Um, these are available at eastwood.com. Um, we, we got these in stock, I think, what, about a week or two weeks ago? About two weeks ago now. Yeah, yeah. so they are on the site. You guys can purchase them right now. Um, and, you know, you can, you can fill up your line. And, you know, you'll find what you guys like as far as the ones you're going to keep a lot of. You know, I keep probably mostly these two uh, on hand. But, you know, I'm probably going to keep a couple of each in the shop because you're going to run into those little jobs where you need you know, Correct. something in between. So they're, they're definitely necessary. Yep. And speaking of something else that um, we just got in stock, um, I'll grab it real, real quick to show you guys before we, uh, we cut out. This is the cut and weld, where we know a lot of you guys have a fender stand. And honestly, not all of us have enough room to have a full welding table or a uh, plasma table. So what we did was we know you guys all have fender stands. If you don't, they're on our website, you know, every, every day for yeah. you know, roughly 20, 25 bucks. And all you can, you can do is you buy each one of these pieces separately. You've got a welding top that just clicks into place. You can stick your C-clamps um, in, in the voids here. You can you know, weld your project, use it as a project table. Or if you want to do plasma cutting, you swap over to the other side. It's got replaceable slats. You put your project on top, and uh, you don't have to worry about any marring because they're all the uh, fasteners are all inset. Oh, yeah. And as soon as you, uh, if you do, you know, waste some slats, we do have kits of just ten slats. You can quick loosen these up, slide one out, slide a new one in. As you can see, we already did a good amount on this one. It's got a little bit of a void there. It's going to keep going, um, and you can replace them you know, very easily, you know, with our uh, little kits. And you stow away, oh my gosh. You yeah, know, stow you away, you cup. literally pull this down. It takes, I mean, it's taking up no more space than just the bare, you know. The, and Correct. This, and this fits, I mean, we're not necessarily trying to, you know, you don't have to buy our fender stand. If you got any fender stand, yeah. you know, traditional fender stand, it's going to fit it. Yeah, so. we tested this on multiple different fender stands. Um, it fits everyone we've been able to, to source, basically. And um, it's very easy to stow away. I think as you see it right now, it might be three or four inches wide. So yeah. you can put it behind your bench, in between stuff. Um, and if you do still want to use it as a fender stand, you just push it back out. And the, uh, the pieces of foam that you get with your fender stand, they can just plop right over here as it is. And uh, you can use it as is, or you can weld yeah. or cut. That's so awesome. It is live on our website now. Um, you're going to see some videos being released very shortly about this you know, unit itself. But uh, you know, go to eastwood.com and uh, check it out. Cool. So, Scott, you got any other questions? We covered a bunch today. You know, you definitely did a great job. I mean, uh, while I'm sitting here and he's showing it, there's some replacement slats for that table, correct? Yep. So you can see how easy it is just to pick up a kit of them, and when they wear out, get new ones. So we're good to go Sweet. for today. Cool. Right. Well, uh, thanks, guys. Again, uh, if you have any ideas for future broadcasts of any products, like the cut and weld or SCT or anything else that you'd like to see us do a broadcast on, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear your feedback, and we want to try and show whatever you guys want to see for products and, uh, and projects. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll be here tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, doing the MiG-250, so you guys can uh, see a little action with the big boy and how that works. So thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, we'll catch you later.